Okay, if I could start by explaining the title. Um, <coughs> I've spent quite a bit of time around um, machine learning over the years, and I mean, done quite a lot of audio processing, signal processing kind of things. Uh, but video stuff, video processing, haven't really got a clue how they spent any time on that at all. So this stuff, to me, is indistinguishable from magic. So anyway, the idea is uh, taking a, a messed up video and improving the quality. By messed up, I mean uh, low resolution, noisy and all that lot. Okay, let me do a block diagram. So, time going down, so that's your video to start with. First step, break it into individual frames. This, this strategy um, I found after just doing a little bit of research, and really not my field at all, so bear that in mind. And so, first of all, we take out all the frames. Next step, you upscale these. Um, improve the resolution, make them bigger. If possible, make them better quality. Then finally, you interpolate them. So, so if you imagine that going down like that, then combine here set up so that there's two two frames that have been interpolated to give the final, which is then turned back into video. So that's the overall process. And um, what to do with that? Okay, find some algorithms and models that can do it. And I don't actually need that now. So First step, so okay, machine learning stuff, uh, language of choice, Python. And the bit uh, for pulling out the individual frames, uh, there's FM, FFmpeg, that's a uh, standard utility on Linux systems, and well, anywhere. And you can use Python FFM, FFmpeg to approach it programmatically. So I wish to put a little bit of code to do that. Now the way, because there's those separate stages in the process, it seemed to make sense to break it down into separate scripts, which are written locally on the desktop. And an advantage of that is that I'm a mediocre programmer, but I've got AI to assist me. So as you see in chat GPT, for zero, uh, cursor, and most of all, Claude from it 3.5 to help me. And so, little script. So, one little script to pull out the frames. Easy enough. Next, I went hunting for algorithms and models, approaches to doing it. Um, for the for the upscaling, um, they actually call it super re resolution, I found this real SRGAN um, paper with code and um, it's quite cool um, in that they've trained it on synthetic data where they've taken an original video or generated an original video and, they, and then really messed it up by adding things like noise, uh, changing the resolution down, uh, typical video artifacts that can happen. Uh, presumably they used a, original proper video, but anyway, that's say generated the degradation of it artificially and then trained a neural network on that. And so then afterwards, if you bump something in that's messed up, it'll do its best to figure out how it should look. And so I put together a little script of 
than this. And that, um, well, for starters, it upscales. The original video, one second, the original video I was playing with um, was a really old one that Dan Brickley and Ed, the presenta presentation they did um, on both Friend of a Friend project years ago. And I don't know if it's the actual, the best quality available, but um, because I, I, I lost the link to the original, but I got, I da at some point I'd downloaded from YouTube the uh, straight video and the straight sound, presumably at the best quality I could get from it. And the, um, the video quality was 160 by 120 pixels at eight frames per second. Uh, eight, yeah, eight frames per second. And uh, that really awful and very blocky, very crunchy, just generally bad. And I'll put a little sample of that in now. The first session today, the first session I'm sharing with Ed Dumble, and following that, a bunch of uh, lighting sessions. First of all, The audio, by the way, that I kind of cheated. I'd heard about this 11 Labs voice isolator and paid the $13 or whatever it was for a month's use of it. And uh, that worked a treat. So let's skip the audio processing. I did try some standard techniques, you know, around FFTs and filtering and that kind of thing. Um, not machine learning ones, just very old fashioned bits and didn't have much joy. This vocal isolator thing did a, a good job of it. Uh, so back to the video. Yeah, and so running, running this algorithm on it, um, super resolution, um, it upscaled it to 320 by 240. So it's actually four times the area of video, still eight frames a second. And um, it's very heavily, very heavy on the processing. So um, I, only, I only was only able to do about 10 seconds of that in a reasonable time, just to try it out a little snippet. Um, I've forgotten to note down how long those took. Um, maybe half an hour in total. It wasn't drastic for 10 seconds, but for the, the video I wanted to work on is 40 minutes long, so um, days on a CPU. Um, next was the interpolation bit. That I used uh, a technique called RIFE, which is real-time intermediate flow estimation for video frame interpolation. I'll put links to the papers and everything below. Um, and all the codes in GitHub and uh, so sorted for that. And um, this Rife, they'd got a release of it from GitHub um, where it actually came as a binary with everything packaged in it. And it's relatively straightforward to get that going. I mean, I had to mess around with Python virtual environment and like run that outside of the environment because it was all getting a bit tangled up. Uh, but pretty straightforward. And then finally another little script to take the take the bigger frames that have been interpolated. In how the hell do you say that? interpolated into uh, the resulting frames, those made back into a video. Bang, all done. And um, the result, pretty blobby. An obsession sphere. The first session I'm sharing with Ed Dumble, uh, with Follow Mel and the Butch all about uh, sessions, and I will present them to you in that still on the call. Now, there's a point I should make here that using kind of traditional noise reduction techniques in, in any kind of signals, um, you've always got that problem of 
you've only got the information in there that you start with. And so whatever you do, you can't add any more information to it. You've just got that that's terrible. And you can only kind of jiggle around the edges to make it seem a bit better, maybe psychologically look better. But when you're using machine learning and the AI models, um, you've actually got more information being input. Like the upscaling has been trained on external information. And it's pretty easy to imagine that you could have um, something, it, it was a presentation I wanted to improve the quality of. And it was, you could easily imagine that both phases of this, the upscaling and the uh, interpolation, could have been um, optimized by training them on other videos of presentation. So you've got the faces, pay attention to the details around the faces, things that seem important in that context. And so you're actually putting in extra information from outside. So you can generally improve the quality. The results I got weren't too great, but um, the way I put the code together, I think it's, it's a starting point for improving. Um, and I've, I've wound up putting it up on uh, Google CoLab, Code Laboratory, whatever you call it, uh, CoLab. And uh, took a lot of messing about, a lot to do with the getting the data in and out of it. Um, I ended up using Google Drive, my Google Drive, to keep the input video and all the intermediate frames and things on the Google Drive, which is easy enough to in interface with from CoLab. And um, I also noticed that you can, uh, there's libraries to do it uh, from Hugging Face as well. So it's not, you know, whatever the, um, environment it's easy enough to interface with the drive thing and um, but see I used up all my GPU free GPU things um, got absolutely zero in the bank at the moment and so um, I only did this for 10 seconds but got it working end to end and end result um, so anyway given that Plenty of um, uh, optimizations that are probably in easy reach. I mean, the um, main one being just tweaking the parameters a bit, because I, I just used all the defaults everywhere. Well, this is what I was thinking actually. That one possible way of improving it at low cost, in terms of computing power and everything else, is say you've got the frames. You've got your original frames there. You upscale them. Sorry, I'm just like this. You upscale them using this algorithm I've got there. Um, but then you could take the same frames and upscale them using a different algorithm, something like you know, just a simple um, by cubic or something like that. That's kind of pretty much physically stretches it. But then, I mean, at the moment I've got the interpolator just taking two frames into one. Um, we could have three or however many. That part of it wasn't as expensive as I expected. It was the upscaling that took most of the time. So, you know, like take three of these. And this part, the actual coding that up would be pretty easy, just like give them odd and even numbers. Uh, and then once you've got these, um, throw them back into video and you're done. So a lot to play with. And that's about it really. And so, yeah, have a look at it and have a play. Have a look at it and have a play. I think... Uh, it's really good fun to do because it's at that kind of sweet spot between having to think about stuff and having knowing what you're doing because they've got that kind of plan and then just finding the algorithms and gluing them together 
and very satisfying for every little step. Very rewarding, a kind of dopamine hit thing. And so, yeah, good fun. But uh, unless something else comes up, I'm leaving it there. So, thank you.